Hope you're doing well. Welcome to my video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Kubernetes metric server. So if you're a software engineer or if you're working in IT, you should have heard about Kubernetes because pretty much all the applications are deployed in Kubernetes. And more importantly, you might have heard about horizontal pod autoscaler or vertical pod autoscaler. These are things that you implement to scale your application pods automatically. So for those, those two things mainly, you need something called a metric server actually. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. So basically metric server collects metrics from kubelets. So kubelets are these little processes that run on basically all the nodes in your Kubernetes cluster. And, uh, and basically it makes it available to us through metrics API. So, and you can access this API through Kubernetes API server. And even with kubectl command, you can actually uh, view these metrics. So I'm going to show you a demo um, basically doing that. So I am actually going to jump into the demo. Uh, the main thing is all the, the resources that I used to actually learn about metric server is going to be in the description. And in my case, actually, I'm, the demo is going to be in a proper Kubernetes cluster, I I installed using kubeadm. But if you're trying this in your mini cube cluster, which is something that you can run in your computer, in your laptop, in your workstation, then you need to add a couple of more parameters in your uh, metric server YAML file. Okay, so I recommend you to check out this link which talks about that. So let's jump into the demo. Okay, so, so I've got a directory called monitoring and I am actually uh, logged into my master node. So what I've got is a master and two worker nodes. So I am on the master and I have a bunch of files here and there's one file called components.yaml and this file basically comes from a repo and this is basically the metric server repo and if you search on this page you will see that metric server is basically deployed using this components yaml okay so what you can do is since you are uh you know i am on actually uh ubuntu uh meshin what i did was i did a wget and that's a utility to download things from internet basically i used a utility to download this components.yaml file and you can download it however you want and you can copy it to the machine where you are probably wanting to try this out. So what I did was I went into this components.yaml file and then there is a section where basically there's a deployment uh, part. And this is the part that actually deploy, deploys the, the metric server in the kube system namespace. Okay, so, and you have a bunch of uh, sections. We don't need to be worried about everything. So the main thing is that, you know, since we are just doing this and in our practice lab, we can actually disable this setting, this TLS certificate verification stuff. 
So I added this uh, parameter over here. And if you're interested in the line number, basically this is it. So it's line number one, you know, in your case, you will see the line 139. And, you know, you can just insert this parameter between these two lines. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this YAML file and which will create a bunch of resources for us okay so it creates a service account role some roles uh, role bindings uh, it creates a metric server service of course we need the deployment and it deploys the metric server apis as well right so the next thing is um, we need uh, we need to create this index.php file so this step is kind of like optional I'll tell you why so in the link that you can find in the description basically you can follow these steps to create your image um, and I'm talking about a docker image here so basically you can create your image and and we can actually use that image to uh, basically get a PHP Apache pod started okay and this is the image that I'm talking about so this image comes from as you can see kubernetes itself feel free to use this image but if you want to create the image yourself then basically you need to you know create this index.php file and you need to create a docker file okay so I've created my own stuff um, so this is the docker file and I've got the index.php here and I actually created the image I you know I have it so what I will do is I'll go into my other YAML file which I got from this link right you have the PHP Apache YAML file I copied the whole thing in and main thing is just come down to the place where you actually specify the image and and I'm gonna put the image over here okay and I'll save this PHP Apache YAML file okay so now all we need to do is um, so you will do all these things right so you'll need a index.php which is basically like a CPU intensive program has a for loop it creates square root of this decimal many many times and seems to be summing up um, so basically stuff that will make your CPU hot and then you have the docker file and you'll be copying this index.php into this docker image and uh, you'll be running the docker build command and uh, don't use my <laughs> account use your account here actually and uh, create your image and then of course I updated the PHP Apache YAML file which I downloaded from this link and uh, now we'll just go ahead and update or apply this YAML file so let me clear the screen apply PHP Apache YAML so that creates a deployment and a service the service is called PHP Apache service okay so we've deployed the metric server and we've deployed this uh, pod or a deployment so this deployment is basically containing uh, 
PHP program that is like if you run it it will just make your CPU hot okay so now this is another command that I stole from Kubernetes documentation basically what this is going to do is it's going to hit your PHP uh, program through the, the service that it created. It's called the PHP Apache service, right? So this is basically a container or a part that they're calling as load generator, which uses a busy box image and it just sleeps 0 0.01 seconds and it hits this particular link or URL continuously in a while through loop right so hopefully that's gonna basically sp spike up the usage on your part so if I do a watch kubectl top pod so you will see that the usage is actually increasing right so suddenly the usage the cpu usage went up to 501 millicores that's half a core and then it stops at 500 uh, millicores because as you can see in the yaml file that we actually use to deploy this pod we have a limitation right so it doesn't go above that 500 millicore or 0.5 core cpu okay so that's the deal actually so if i just go ahead and cancel this a command which is going to basically terminate the, the load generator pod and we're not we're not hitting the PHP Apache link anymore so I expect the resource usage to come down will it yeah it did okay so that's basically the point okay so just to close this topic so I use the kubectl top pod command you can also use the kubectl top um, so let me cancel this you can also use kubectl top node command that gives you um, you know basically summary of these metrics by node okay all right so i'm going to stop here and i hope that was clear and let me know if you have any questions subscribe and uh, press the bell icon if you want to be notified about these uh, kubernetes docker devopsy videos thank you